VCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Can't believe I'm putting my voice to this. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Thank you for your irrelevant opinion. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. The first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up. If you want to hear what I got to say, I'm a broadcast journalist. I have a right to my opinion. Oh, son of a... I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even at commentary. And there's the bell. And we are off. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferrandari back in studio after a week absence. Back from Florida and as cold as it is, man, I wish I was back there. It's about twice as warm as it is now. It was like 80 degrees when I got off the plane. Now here it is. We're barely at 40. And back after an even longer absence. Three weeks, baby. The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend in his own mind, Lucas the Intern. Lucas, welcome back. It's good to be back, Ron. Man, where to start? Well, we had a Survivor Series pay-per-view, didn't we? Oh, excuse me. What, what am I, a tree stump? I was going to shake it up. Uh-huh. I know, it takes a lot of strength to shake a tree stump up, but... Nick Attaldi, everybody. Yay! Yes, Nick Attaldi. Thank you. Thank pushing you. Pushing the buttons, Thank turning you, the Lucas. dials. Thank you. You're my there we go. I was going to have Lucas introduce you to yeah. have him earn some brownie points with you. Lord knows I've got all mine taken away long ago. Oh, that's right. And you just now you're now you're in a minus here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Performing about as well as the Sixers. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So we, uh, or maybe as bad as well as TNA's ratings. That's probably oh, a more uh, yeah. yeah more accurate comparison. But we'll talk. <laughs> I guess I guess we could talk turkey because that's pretty much what was done all over the course of the week with Thanksgiving and. The uh, it, there, there was just so much that went on, uh, food fights and obviously elimination tag matches, because that's, that's what you do in, in late November. We'll start off with the Survivor Series pay-per-view, and uh, well, as we kind of figured the two main events, uh, they went pretty much as, uh, as we had expected. John Cena beating Alberto Del Rio to retain the World Heavyweight Championship, Randy Orton pinning the big show after using the uh, long-since-been-used punt kick. To knock Big Show out. Could we be seeing a return since 2009? Stay tuned. Well, we're going to be, yeah. It looks like it's going to be 2009 all over again, but we'll get into that in a little bit. The other matches uh, in the kickoff, Miz beating Kofi Kingston, as I had figured. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Roman Reigns, the sole survivor in the what I thought was going to be the match of the night, and it certainly did well for itself. The Shield and the Real Americans beating the Rhodes, Usos, and a returning Rey Mysterio. Yeah, we were both kind of fooled on that one. Big E Langston, still your Intercontinental Champion, disposing of Curtis Axel rather handily. And a match so nice that we got to see it twice, once on Survivor Series and once on Raw. Total Divas beating the True Divas. Because this was an Vince loves the show. All over. This is just an embarrassment. The whole the match on Monday ended with Nikki Bella and and Brie Bella and Eva Marie against Summer Rae in a dance off, and I was laughing and crying at the same time. That's how bad it was. It was like oh, this is not quality television. Why are we subdued to this crap? Uh, I, well, I think you had to be subdued in order to be able to watch it. I don't know why you were subjected to it. Uh, Mark Mark Henry beating Ryback. That was a bonus match. Yay, Battle of the, uh, the the Powerhouses. WrestleMania flashback. <laughs> yeah. Vince, Vince, I'm sure, was loving it in the back, as was Kevin Dunn. <laughs> uh, making his own gravy over that match. And then CM Punk and Daniel Bryan beating the Wyatt family to the shock of both of us. But it looks like there's more to come with that feud, as uh, as we'll get into a little bit later. So I, I, told, I said Punk and Bryan were going to win, I thought. No, we we discussed it over text. I can pull up the uh, the text. We we both had the Wyatt family on that one. Okay then. So all in all, I, my, I was five and two on the pay per view. You you were three and four, still hanging around just under five hundred. You're taking the Phillies approach. <laughs> what can I say? I'm still a Manuel fan. Fair enough. Well, beat the man, gonna beat the man. You know. <laughs> Why not? A little. 
little Charlie Manuel impression. Urgh, Why fire. not? Yeah, I'm I'm about ready to be. <laughs> this is this is awful. But Raw kind of started off interestingly. Uh, Randy Orton gloating about his title win, declaring he was the best superstar in the the 50 year history of WWE. And it led to a, a rather interesting challenge, and we've got that for you right here, courtesy of Track 2. Congratulations, Randy. We couldn't be any more pleased with your victory last night. You know, when I handpicked you to be the future of this industry 10 years ago, I knew you had the potential to be one of the greatest superstars in the history of the WWE. And last week, Randy, we gave you exactly what you needed. Motivation. We threw adversity your way, planted the seeds of doubt, and you did exactly what we knew you would do as our champion. You reached deep down inside and you rose above victorious. And besides, it's, it's always nice when Triple H and I are proven right. Wow, Stephanie, what a shock. There you've gone, and you've somehow made this all about yourselves. I didn't need your help last night. You said you wouldn't interfere physically. Yet when I was on the verge of an untainted win, here you came, right down ringside. I didn't need your help to prove that I'm the face of the WWE. Randy, we said there would be no physical interference, and there wasn't any physical interference. Now, you might have have a hard time remembering this because you were unconscious at that moment. But the reason we came down to ringside was because it looked like there was about to be a new WWE champion. No, 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 no. I don't need your protection. I can take care of myself. Shut up. I can take care of myself. I took everything that the big show had to dish out, unlike somebody else I know. And I stood back up and I got the job done. I slayed the giant. I slayed the giant because I am the face of the WWE. I am the WWE champion. I am the greatest superstar in the 50 years that this company has been around. The greatest star in the WWE Take that away from me, not you, not you, and not any one of you people can take that away from me. Nobody can. How you doing? John Cena, World Heavyweight Champion. Oh yeah, I forgot, you're Randy Orton, the guy who slayed a giant, and the guy who's standing here looking like a giant piece of... John! Whoa. Look, I'm not my father, I don't want to see you spontaneously combust, but that being said, we don't like our time wasted, so what exactly do you want? I want you for a second to listen to these folks. You want to know why they chant for Daniel Bryan, you want to know why they chant yes! because they're sick of the administrative BS. Looks like I struck a chord. They're sick of guys like you feeling entitled, being coddled, being protective, being confused little boys. But you did ask one question that I found very interesting. Who is champion? Because the way I look at it right now, there are two champions in this very ring. So I say we cut right through the administrative BS and find an answer to that question because I believe it's time there should be only one champion. You're not, you're not gonna seriously consider listening to- hey, whoa, 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 enough, 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 enough. This is not between them. 
This is champion to champion for once. This is man to man for once. This is you and me. You got the guts? Will you do it? This is a match 11 years in the making. Hell, I'll leave it up to you. I challenge you right now in front of this audience, in front of the world. Randy Orton versus John Cena for the World Heavyweight Championship and the WWE Championship. Wow. Normally, I hate it when they do that, but we have been talking about this possibility for a while now. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. So what I walked in yesterday, that was you three plotting. You've been doing it all along. So what I thought was going on really is going on. Randy, grow up. All right? A minute ago, you're running your mouth about how confident you are. Now you're crying about it? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do something epic. In three weeks... At TLC, tables, ladders, and chairs. We are going to hang the World Heavyweight Championship above this ring. And we are going to hang the WWE Championship above this ring. And we're going to make history. We're going to do something epic because it is going to be Randy Orton going one-on-one -on -one against John Cena in a tables, ladders, and chairs match. And that is going to be your main event for TLC coming up in just two weeks from tomorrow. How about that? John Cena and Randy Orton... <laughs> For the first time, for the last time, okay, maybe for, maybe for more than just the first time. In fact, I did a little bit of uh, research, and this is an interesting statistic regarding Cena and Orton. They have faced each other one-on-one -on, -one on pay per view seven previous times, Cena winning four of them. You have to go all the way back to their first encounter, SummerSlam of 2007, which Cena won to retain the WWE Championship. Actually, in all, all seven cases, the WWE title was on the line. And the other little interesting note about it, they've alternated wins. So Cena beat Orton at SummerSlam 07. Orton then beat Cena by disqualification at Unforgiven 07 a month later. Then you got to go all the way to February of 2008. Cena beat Orton by disqualification. Orton was the champion by that point. Orton then beat Cena at SummerSlam 2009. So you have to go a year and a half later. And then four matches basically in three months as far as pay-per-views went. Cena then beat Orton to win the title at breaking point in an I Quit match. Then fast forward three weeks later, Orton beat Cena to get the title back at Hell in a Cell in a Hell in a Cell match. And then Cena beat Orton to win the title back at bragging rights three weeks after that in a 60-minute Falls Count Anywhere Iron Man match. So Cena has the leg up 4-3, to three, but based on the pattern, it looks like Orton would... Uh, if that trend holds true, then Orton would be your both WWE and world champion coming up in a couple of weeks. Looks like that, uh, well, this Monday will probably be where they'll set the rest of the matches up as uh, the following Monday, the, the go-home show. They've got something special planned. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Also coming up this hour, we're going to look over to TNA and what they had going on on Impact for Thanksgiving, including the funeral for Aces and Eights now that they've disbanded. And we'll get into a little Facebook feedback as well. We've got room for your calls. We've got a uh, John Cena update regarding Hulk Hogan. Interesting. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, what stupid things you shouldn't do while driving. We'll, uh, we'll get into that update in a little bit. And uh, also, a former WWE Tag Team Champion suffers a stroke. Who is it? We'll find out coming up on the other side. We've also got room for your calls and a bunch more at 215-949-3232 or toll-free at 888-922-2149. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.
Tag team elimination matches, food fights, and turkey suits. Must be Thanksgiving in professional wrestling. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, indeed. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here alongside Lucas the Intern and Nick Cataldi turning dials, pushing buttons. Yay. Cheering for himself. I've learned to pause that for that. That wasn't me. <clears throat> yes, it was. You're fired. Somebody who sounds a lot like you then. You're you fired. You can't fire me. In the words of Teddy Long, you can't fire me. I quit. Not really. I love this job. <laughs> don't, don't. They're like, please don't get rid of me. Keep me around as long as you can. Must It must be your, your twin brother, Richard Cataldi. I have a cousin named Richard. You have a cousin that, named Richard? Does that count? Uh... Sure, we'll go with that. I don't know if it's a twin cousin necessarily. No. Identical yeah. cousins and you'll find... Oh, sorry, right, wrong get, show. Let's get back to the, the show. Patty Duke. Wow. Yeah, Patty Duke, yeah. Let's go back to the wait, show. Wait, wait to party like it's 1963. Yeah, Good right. job. Yeah. Weren't you saying something earlier about Dominic DiNucci, too? Yes. Always. Wasn't he around that uh, that, that era? Yes. All right. Uh, we see where you're stuck at. <laughs> All right, let, let's talk a little bit of impact. You brought the cousin thing up, not me. <laughs> I said or, or, brother, or, or you twin, said cousin. Twin, yeah. twin, yeah, we were looking alike, and I said he was my cousin. I did bring up the cousin thing. But yeah, you did. You said the twin thing, which made me think of Patty Duke. Anyway, who am I always going to love with? Oh, my. This is this is going horribly. All right. <laughs> no, notes of things from, from impact. Uh, Dixie Carter, who... I have promised and still will hold that promise of not having her voice on these uh, on these airwaves because you, the people, ask for it to not happen. She introduced her new chief of staff, Rockstar Spud. Dang. Yeah, I know. Just what we need, another authority figure because we don't already have like 13 of them between the two organizations, wow. right? Yes, but you know, th- th- this one's from England, so... I don't know. I'd still take William Regal, but that's just me. Yeah, I would too. But yeah, there is, a, a, among other things, uh, announced the next round of gimmicks for the title tournament. That's going to be going on next week. And a winner winner turkey dinner competition. That's actually making me hungry, actually. I'm, really? I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in a trip to Vancouver and I want more turkey now. <clears throat> I, I think we're all in a, in a perspective. Uh, Trip to fan coma. All right, let, let's get back. To Compounded this. in my case by, um, I think I'm still recovering from the wedding last weekend. All right, so let, let's just get back. You got to married? Wrestling. No, no, a buddy of mine did. Okay. That's why I wasn't here, and you had the little CD oh, that. Uh, let's, let's I was down in Tampa. I held down the fort by myself. Okay. All right, guys, let's get back to wrestling, though. Uh, that we can go over some of the results, I guess. Why don't we just fire him off? Ethan Carter defeated Curry Man in three. Th- Who the heck is Curry Man? Well, Curry Man for a while was Chris Daniels under a mask. <laughs> that is racist. It probably was, but I mean, wrestling and racism, racist? unfortunately, why? are like pranks and beans. Whoa, whoa. Let's get back up here. Why? Why is that racist? Was I'm, he posing to be? Uh... Does it matter? He's under a mask. Does it make it a racist? I don't get it. Yeah, there. <laughs> I was gonna say we we could do a whole show on on racist wrestling characters and angles. Well, yeah, you know, or stereotypes. Or actually, stereotypes. More is probably the better. But the mask Torres. thing didn't happen last month. I mean, it's been going on since I was a kid. And oh, we, I know. We all it know toned long, it down a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, I'm 26 now, so you don't know how long it's been going on. You know? <laughs> that's that dyslexia one. must be kicking in yeah, with you, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got oh, that. God. Uh, he, he learned so quickly, uh, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah. I was gonna, no, I, I was going to say we'll save that for after the holidays because stereotypes heading into the holidays probably not the best topic yeah. to go into. But well, needless well. to say, there were a bunch of them. And actually, oh, if God. you go over to wrestlecrap dot com, little plug for my buddy Justin Henry. He has the, uh, as he calls it, the Wrestle Crap Survivor Series. Definitely want to give that a read. It's it's rather lengthy, oh, but they basically go over a pay per view. With a lot of the inducted characters, and actually one of them is the, the, the team of the subtle stereotypes, <laughs> which includes Kamala, the Ugandan giant, yeah. Saba Simba, which was Tony Atlas's uh, character in 1991 in the WWF, as well as the current tag team Los Matadores. Well, where, 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 do you remember Booker T? Yeah. Where was he from? 
Bro- Bro- uh, Brooklyn? Ori- originally from, from Harlem. Harlem. Har- well, he was from Harlem, he was New- from Harlem. Harlem, New York. Now, you don't book somebody from Harlem, New York. So the Harlem Globetrotters. Can and they weren't from it? Harlem. Sucker! You know. I mean, he is from Houston, Texas. Right. Sorry. This isn't theme sing-along. Oh, God. Plus, your, your sounds more like the I Dream of Genie theme than Booker T. So, well, there was all, there was also Spinner-oony. the Iron Sheik. You know, was a bad guy. Uh, what did the honky tonk man say? Couldn't carry a tune if it had a handle on it. Oh, that's funny. And a bucket. No, I, uh, the, that made I, Iron Sheik. I Iron Sheik was Iran. He was a bad guy. <laughs> Volkov was a Russian. He was no more a Russian than, than I am an astronaut. But anyway, in real life. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Spinner Rooney thing made me laugh because bad guys, the, the Booger yeah. T thing made me laugh because our, that made me think of. Uh, this uh, I was it was literally I think 2007 and we were um it was picture day and we were all bored and my friend uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend Luke Snyder he uh he's he's a he used to be a wrestling fan but he made me do this thing called he made me do the Spinner Rooney during picture day and it was the funniest thing ever I was just doing wrestling game it's like the Mr Kennedy the fake mic drop and the and the uh, Spinner Rooney it, it was just flashback you know. Well, that's it for our show, folks. Thanks for listening. What's his real name, Booker T? No. No. Uh, see, the, the name in itself is, is a stereotype. <laughs> well, it's it's better than what they initially uh, had. Did you ever know a white guy named Booker? I mean, I never, I never have. <laughs> anyway. Uh... No, no. Uh, uh, a quick story on this. The original, like, b- before they came up with Harlem Heat, they initially, their, their names were Kane and Cole, both beginning with a K. Right. And their manager was oh. Colonel Robert Parker. And and they initially were let out to the ring in chains, and they realized, all right, a white Southern guy walking out with two black guys in chains. So somebody, if somebody didn't realize, hmm, maybe that's not such a good idea. (laughs) Yeah, right. But this was WCW in the early '90s, where they they, sensitivity wasn't exactly their greatest uh, (laughs) attribute, to say the least. Anyway, uh, sorry, I missed it. These were the same people who, who named a wrestler at, uh, who at the time was part of a uh, group called the Alliance and Hulkamania right. when Hogan came in. They named him, oh gosh, they named him the Final Solution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't, for those of you who didn't pay attention in history, that was, I think, also the nickname of what Hitler used for uh, all the stuff right. that he did in the forties. Right. And so, upon quickly realizing that, they went, "Oh, we better change this," and called him the ultimate solution instead. L- L- yeah, let's 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 get back to impact. We got off on a really really bad tangent. Yeah, lay the tap of defeat like on the sky. Okay, you take it from here, Ferran. Yeah, lay, lay, well, the thing with Lay, she's obviously a dominant. Wrestler, but she's still very new. I think they're trying to like copy Tamina Snuka, like Snuka, sort of like how uh, Austin Aries. I think they're trying to copy CM Punk with the facial hair and the greatest man that ever lived and the best in the world. That whole thing. I really think they're trying to <laughs> copy off of TNA that. copying off of WWE. No, say it ain't so. Or like the X Division title with Money in the Bank, you cash it in. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, that was also brought in when Hogan came in, so that was. I don't know. He he had a few ideas that seemed good on paper, but uh, not all of them can be winners. But yeah, he doesn't exactly have a winning record. Your record at the predictions are is better than his record as far as ideas in TNA. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Okay, um, that was showing how bad his is. That's what that's where I was going with that. The Bromans defeated Nor Furnum and Dewey Barnes in a turkey suit match. Yeah, a whopping fifteen seconds that went. Yeah, the the turkey suit, which I, I think is a throwback to uh, to the old weasel suit that Bobby the Brain Heating used to have. Only yeah. because it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, so they ended up uh, they ended up putting turkey suits on to the entertainment of I don't know who. I don't know. At least it wasn't a tuxedo match. That's probably a good thing. And then, then of course, there was the, the funeral service for Aces and Eights. And we actually have, well, we have the footage of the, uh, the, the funeral service led by Ken Anderson. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to mourn the passing of the Aces and Eights. A part of you may have passed away with their demise. This will be a final tribute to their legacy. A day to celebrate all the good that they've done to this world. Each of your lives were touched in some way by this group. So I now ask that anyone to please come up with any kind and positive words to speak. 
anyone? Gentlemen. I was uh, trapped inside this organization for over a year. An organization responsible not only for keeping the miles off my Harley, but also many, 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 many segments on the show. Yeah. I'd really like to thank uh, Bully Ray's ex-father-in-law and ex-wife for sending over that delicious deli plate. Joe, good stuff, nice. But I'm sure one of one of you has something you'd like to offer. couple of friends in the group. Dilo Brown and Wes Briscoe. You all remember Dilo, right? He's got it shakes his head that funny way and he actually I think they yeah they did. They made a bobblehead out of him. Look at that. I wish you the best in your next life. Anybody else? first showed up in TNA, they were faceless marauders, men who hid themselves behind masks. Beneath those masks, when we pulled them off, we found some of the most ugly visages ever thought of by man. Ugly. I bring this. Possibly the only substance on earth that makes you palatable to the human eye. And I lay this to rest in your memoriam. Unfortunately, Taz will still be with me at the broadcast table. Uh, I know. Sorry. But fortunately, I am able to lay to rest today the stinky, the smelly cut that Taz wore for the past 18 months. Hmm. And at the same time, not exactly sure... How Brooks booty shorts got under the announce table, but we're going to lay those to rest at the same time. There's one more thing we've got to take care of here. That's uh, <clears throat> this hammer. We've all seen it. A lot of us have felt it. Until beat stain. Jeff Hardy, I, mean, I don't think there's anybody here in here besides maybe you, Mike, who hasn't been touched by Bully's hammer. Uh, I'd like to lay this thing to rest. I think I'm going to keep it. It's a perfectly good hammer. Jamie mm. raped me of everything. For that, I will never forgive you. You better sleep with one eye open. You better sleep with one eye open in the best interest of yourself. But more importantly, in the best interest of your pregnant wife. You all look at death as the last sleep. I look at it. As the final awakening. So there it is. Bully Ray crashing the funeral of his now former group, Aces and Eights, and kind of throwing a uh, 
almost a bit of a threat out there as everybody was kind of cracking jokes at the whole thing. Eric Young crying and not knowing why and <laughs> Samoa Joe laying, a, laying a six-pack to rest and then deciding, you know what? They're cold. We'll go ahead and just have them now and, and almost delivering a toast to aces and eights. And I didn't know you could crash a funeral. <laughs> it has been done. In fact, um, no, I just thought you Vince showed Vaughn up. Right? And, uh, and Owen Wilson's I, 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 next I, I, movie, Funeral Crash. I'm probably going to get so so much trouble for this. But in, 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 in my real life instance, uh, there, there were some estranged members of my family who showed up to my father's funeral. And oh, yeah, actually so they for your scene. funeral. I, I thought they were going to show for your funeral. Oh, okay, we well, go ahead. Now, maybe the funeral of this show, who knows? <laughs> the rate things are going. It's hard, it's hard to talk about. The, the, the biggest issue right now, Thanksgiving week, neither organization is really taking much all that seriously. I mean, no. I mean yeah, exactly. They're, they're figuring, you know what? People are going to be doing their, their holiday thing. They're going to be seeing family. They're not going to be watching wrestling. So it doesn't matter what we put on the screen. Eric and Young, I, the Kyle Kinane of Pro Wrestling. Oh, Eric Young's I love Eric Young. He's hilarious. He really is. He is. He's well, like. Oh, God. Yeah. No, no. He's like, you, okay. He's I don't know like if you were following up with yeah. that or. Well, here, here's something I want to get into. Speaking of ridiculous things, the last couple of weeks, the setup feud between Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandow and the various location-based garbage brawl matches that have been going on including this past week because they were in Long Island they they had uh, your choice of either a Hamptons hardcore match, a Strong Island street fight or a Long Island lumberjack match because somebody liked alliteration from what JBL said what's so hardcore about the Hamptons very true if anything that's usually where Vince loves to uh, attempt to hobnob and you know, curry favor from uh, from those with clout because people look down on him because he has a wrestling organization and Vince has done everything he can to take the word wrestling out of WWE. And that's why we get all of the comedy that we've we've gotten, including, yes, the Hamptons hardcore match between the two of them, which uh, left an interesting uh, chant that was going, or no, that was later that night was the interesting chant that I probably shouldn't talk about on the air. Uh, what was it? The I'll tell you during the commercial yeah, break. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, let's just say I think people were fans of brisses or something. I don't know. I, I don't know what that means. So you have to. That's exactly. Break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's a real education, right? And then, of course, Ms. TV with former New York Giant and current TV talk show host Michael Strahan. That segment just was, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, appalling, utterly appalling. Titus O'Neil coming out as first impersonating Strahan. That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> like, comes out with the gap in his teeth. Yeah, I mean, maybe if he had like a, a you know a little box wig or whatever. I'm looking, I was like, Strahan isn't bald. What's going on here? But then, yeah, the, the three attempting to hip toss each other. And I don't know. They're using Miz to try to be funny, but in the same token, he's just finishing oh. up, you know, or just, just in the beginning of a heel turn. He's or old. so we think. So I don't know. There's consistent inconsistency going on, and I don't know. I don't know what can be done about it. I feel like he's just like the thing with Vince is he's got to start like if he wants pe- if he wants people to take him seriously, he's really got to focus on wrestling because the comedy. He's going back to the cartoon era. He really is. <laughs> it's yeah. It's hitting a lot. I looked at the voting on the WWE app, and I'm just like, Ugh, this is sad. This is this is sad. Why do you have to, to... It's pro wrestling. They should be beating the crap out of each other. Yeah, there should be some comedic points. Not not dance-offs and... Uh, yeah, and like the Hamptons hardcore matches. There's nothing hardcore about the Hamptons. There really isn't. Unless occasionally when a waiter spills a drink on some spoiled rich heiress and she like flips out. That's the only thing. Is this experience talking? No, I've never been to the Hamptons. I really don't hope I go. I really don't. For those of you who have homes up in the Hamptons, we uh, apologize and let you know that the thoughts expressed are solely those of Lucas the intern who in no way reflect. I'll be... I'll, <laughs> okay, look, I've got no problem with people that live in the Hamptons, unless you're rich and spoiled. Um, but... Isn't that kind of... Doesn't that kind of cover the whole bases, though? Yeah, good point, yeah. I don't know. Let, let, let's, it sounds racist to me. Oh, shut it. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe incomist. I don't know. I'm making up words as I go along here. I was going to say I never heard that one before, but I liked it. It works. It fits the bill. And the other item of note, 
and it, it's amazing it took me 43 minutes to go into it. Where's <laughs> Daniel Bryan? He got kidnapped by the Wyatt I family. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> as he's pointing his fingers up in the air as this, he's doing the yes chant, just to let that out there. I don't know. Will WWE pay any more attention to it than they did when Kane was uh, sequestered by the Wyatt family? Or will Daniel Bryan come back in a suit and be yet another authority figure in oh, WWE? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping doesn't happen. Because that's like he'll shave the beard, cut his hair. And it'll Everything that Vince McMahon wanted him to do back before SummerSlam. Yeah, and I'll be like, who the heck is that? Oh, it's Daniel Bryan. Wow, good going, Vince. You just ruined the company. We'll have to make a note of that. <laughs> Just, 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 yeah. I, I hope you're not prognosticating that, but because I mean, I want to be a wrestler, but if that, if my thing, if my gimmick ever gets take, if my gimmick ever gotten taken away, I mean, I might have to pull a Bob Backlund and then come back like what? Right, put what, put yeah. somebody in a crossface chicken wing? Is that no? Like it not leave the WWE and then come back way after my prime and finally turn heel? All right, I'll do it. Just give me a paycheck. I don't know if that was necessarily the case. All right, let's take care of some business. We'll come back. We've got some news and notes on an interesting, but at the same time, just head-scratching Thanksgiving week as we make our way to TLC coming up in a couple of weeks, and who knows what other insanity is going to come along the way. All right, we'll come back here. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, November 30. On this date in 1997, ECW held its November to Remember pay-per-view. In the main event, Shane Douglas pinned Bam Bam Bigelow to win the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 1998, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Chattanooga, Tennessee. In the main event, Bret Hart defeated Diamond Dallas Page by knockout in a no-disqualification match to win the WCW United States Championship. On this date in 2009, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Baltimore, Maryland. In the main event, Triple H pinned Chris Jericho. This has been Today in Wrestling History, November 30. Hi, this is Jim Cornette, and you're listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry on 1490 WBCB. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you alongside Lucas the Intern, Nick Cataldi. Hey. Turning knobs and pushing buttons and Ooh, I like this. keeping us up on the air here and also giving me clarification that I can tell the story that I wasn't sure if I could tell before the break going back to Monday Night Raw. Apparently during a commercial break there, the, there was an interview with a, a fan who had won tickets, front row tickets I believe, to Raw and it came up based on a creation of a character. Like if he could be a WWE superstar, what character would he be? And he said that he would be the kosher butcher. And <laughs> uh, Nick's already loving this. His finishing move would be the circumcision. I heard it once before. I still like it. <laughs> so, of course, during the Xavier Woods Heat Slater match, oh. the, the crowd, and this is probably what a lot of people were scratching their heads at, no pun intended, <laughs> saying circumcision. Yeah, they were chanting circumcision. Well, clap, 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 clap. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm I'm wondering what his first name would be, and I won't say Richard. <laughs> uh, possibly, I don't know. There, there, there's just it just goes so downhill so quickly. <laughs> there, there's no good that and can come from this. I don't even think that guy was serious about it. Just entering it in, like, oh crap, I won. I, I, well, I don't know. know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. I'm sure. <laughs> As I see from a tweet here, uh, somewhere Vince is secretly laughing but furious. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Because that, that is Vince's style of humor. I mean, how many how many poop jokes have we seen over the years that Vince is cracking up on and everybody else is just kind of stoically staring blankly, wondering what's going on? Or Mae Young gives birth to the hand. Yeah, that's another one that... <laughs> no, not Mae Young, you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Mae Young, you dummy. 
Ah, uh, yes, from the, the the retirement that wasn't. Well, All right, we got, we've got a few minutes left here. Let's get into some some news and notes, some intern insight. Lucas, it's all you. All right. For now. Okay. Um, so the date for the Slammies was announced this uh, this week. It was WWE announced that the 2013 Slammy Awards edition of Raw will take place on December 9th. The show will be held in Seattle, Washington at the Key Arena. Just as WWE decided to go country for, go, for the Go Home show to a Survivor Series, they're, like, they're using a theme for all. Like, I am guess they're doing this for just before TLC. They're going to have another theme, so it's going to be the Slammy Awards. And uh, Yeah, that, it's, it's a switch because in past years, at least the past couple, they've had the Raw immediately after TLC yeah. be the Slammy Awards. I know that's what it was uh, this past year when they actually had... <coughs> Uh, Raw in Philadelphia for the Slammy Awards. <laughs> anyway, uh, WWE music staffer, staffer cleared in a civil suit related to a fatal accident. Uh, oh, this is going to be good. Uh, Brittany Lom. I, th- I hope I'm saying it right. Lom, I think. I, I don't know. I don't think Lom. she's offended at this point. An she's got enough to worry about. An assistant to the general manager of WWE's music group uh, um, was cleared in a civil lawsuit related to a car accident that occurred on in July 2009 in New York. Let Lom 24 was driving one passenger, Brandon Berman, who died in the accident, pulled the string on her bikini as she was driving, ta- causing her to take her hand. Hold on. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to... There we go. There, there's a little... Uh, something like that, you you don't want to just breeze on by. No yeah, problem. I'll say. I want to hear more. pulled the string on her bikini top as she was driving. Giggity. And, uh... <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. It's causing her to take her hands off the wheel and, and cover her breasts. Yes. And I would have helped. <laughs> That, that, I would have covered her breast. It's a shame I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> well, because she quick that, reacted, it caused her to get into an accident. That's that's the problem. She, like I said, now if I had been there, and I could have just reached over and helped cover her breast, and yeah. she would have had an accident. You, you know that that's a mic drop for you, Ferran. You can uh, you can use that probably. I'm sure I'll have to go over the tape uh, later. Yeah, definitely. Um, and. Uh, well, here you guys are trying to make more another out of it than it really has to be, you know. Another passenger, Jason Pelletier, filed a civil lawsuit in which he sought damages because his college football career was cut short due to injuries suffered in the accident. Well, buddy, when, you're, when your uh, boneheaded friend pulls down the girl's bikini top, what do you expect? You should be mad at the guy who pulled it down, even though he was dead. But, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh probably don't but the court ruled well de- dead men pay no money that's the problem <laughs> the court ruled that Lom's bikini string being pulled resulted in a sudden and unforeseen emergency not of her own making making wow yeah so lesson learned here lucas the intern there are certain times where it's not a good idea to pull oh, a bikini me, top believe me Ferran, i would never do that unless i was in the comfort of my own home um Let's let's just scratch out what well, I said. Well, if the there. car isn't moving, it's just let's, fine too, you know. <laughs> let's edit that out. For like now. if you're in the back seat of it or something like that. Hit or, the you dump know. button. We should. <laughs> they they can't hear that part. I'm just okay. trying to help. Okay. Um. So does Cena won Hogan at WrestleMania 30? I don't know. Does he? There, Let there, us know. There's actually. I'm probably going to do an article in the next couple of weeks. It was. Uh, they were saying, um, Hulk Hogan wanted to come back. Was, from what Dan from Chicago had said, there was like Hulk Hogan coming back in 2014. They were saying that. Oh yeah, his contract's yeah. up, and uh, he hasn't. He has. He's. He's still kind of a free agent. He's there was, uh, doing other things like swinging on a wrecking ball on a thong, you know, <laughs> things like that. And uh, apparently, though, it was. Uh, they were saying certain opponents for him at WrestleMania 30, and I'll, I'll give you an article on that. Um, but. Uh, Apparently, John, Spe- John Cena spoke with TMZ at a Kmart event and said he would like to see Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 30, but doesn't want him to see him in the ring because of his age prevents him from performing at a high level. And I think that's a little insulting, but at the same time, the guy can barely pull himself into the ring anymore without breaking a hip. Well, I mean, it's not even that so much. I mean, you have to look at two factors. He, looks, One, he walks like Mae Young, and he's like, what, 60-something? He is 60 years old. On top of that, he has had both knees replaced one hip replaced, and he has had nine back surgeries. And the fact that he still wants to go in there, I mean, at this point, he, how far is he away from, from being the $6 million man? I mean, they've, they've attempted to rebuild him so many times. That would times. actually be pretty cool. Uh, Hulk Hogan the, becomes or the, the Hulk. Bionic, uh, bionic, I don't know. $6 million uh, man. Well, because, like... Which, oddly enough, was named Steve Austin. Yeah, and basically, he's turning into Mickey Rourke from The Wrestler. You gotta stop wrestling. No, I gotta get back in there, brother. No, no, I don't advise that. Because you're gonna Alimony's have, expensive, brother. Yeah, you're gonna have a uh, you're, you're gonna have a cliffhanger ending where you jump on somebody from the top rope and the screen. Oh, goes please, wide. Hogan hasn't gone to the top rope in thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever? I I think in Japan. 
apparently. When he wrestled over in Japan, that's where he pulled out a lot more of the stops. But in the States, his moveset was much more simplistic. Mm -hmm. Cena said he was speaking as a Hulkamaniac. To me, he's always welcome. It's like kicking Santa Claus out of Christmas. He can't do it. Um, there was also a thing that uh, Mark Henry is to cameo in the latest WWE film. Hopefully. Oh, goody. Another another WWE film. No, no. It's not like... It, what I like, though, is, like you said, I liked it when Cena starred in it, but I guess they're having them do cameos. Like, Wade Barrett was in Dead Man Down, which was an amazing movie, I must say. He That was a... Uh, Dead Man Down with Colin Farrell. Mm -hmm. and it was a, an amazing movie. Wade Barrett actually played... It wasn't like it was a big supporting role, but it was like he was in most of the scenes. So we're just standing there in the background with a... Some, like a snarly look on his face. Just well, I, I think moviegoers would take the WWE films more seriously if whatever wrestler or superstar wasn't in the starring role. That's no, no, why it's a cameo though. It's not exactly. It's a cameo. That's why I'm saying this at least has more of a chance than let's say the Marine or the Marine Two or the Marine Three or, or uh, round. Legendary Twelve or uh, Twelve, Twelve Rounds. Twelve Rounds in the Marine. I like those two. I want the to Chaperone. The chaperone. You yeah. want to keep going? Knuckleheads. Uh, Suburban Commando, but he wasn't really a WWE superstar then, but still. Well, uh, you're going way old school. Yeah. Going back into my yeah. territory with Suburban Commando. I actually want to see Legendary, though. That that looked like a good movie. Um, you know, it's just my certain taste in movies. Like, I like... Uh, I like Napoleon Dynamite, and my dad walked in one time and asked my mom, mother and I if we were smoking crack while we were watching the movie, because he just thought it was a stupid movie. Um, but back to wrestling. They're saying, uh, stupid movies can be funny under the right circumstances. Yeah. Like, You Don't Mess With the Zohan, terrible movie, some very gut-busting parts. Um, anyway. Never saw it. I'll have to make yeah. sure not to. WWE issued a press release to announce that uh, the partnership with Blumhouse Productions in the film on the film Incarnate, which I would have thought would have been Brock Lesnar in that, you know, Beast Incarnate. Um, and uh, the film will be directed by Brad... Leave Pitt. the jokes to me, will you? And will star Aaron Eckert. WWE star Mark Henry has a cameo in the film Eckert stars as an unconventional exorcist who taps into the subconscious of a nine-year-old boy who is possessed by a powerful ancient demon, Kazulu. And uh, the film will be <sighs> distributed by Universal Pictures in the United States while Blumhouse will oversee the foreign distribution. Interesting. Great stuff. Do you want to take it from here? Yeah, I was going to say. Let me, let me, <laughs> as I've said in the past, can I have my show back? <laughs> Works out so well. All right, Total Divas. I know I've ripped it on quite a few occasions, but apparently people are watching it because it's been renewed for a second season. Any celebration on your, oh, that's right, AJ's not in it, if so you, you're lukewarm yeah. about it if at you, best. If, yeah, uh, punny. Um, lukewarm, yeah. Sometimes I make puns and don't even realize I do. Anyway, in that yeah, case, put the AJ pun was Lee, and I'll start watching it again. Um, I did watch it at one point, and then it just got s uh, after like the first thirty minutes of the episode. I'm just like, I'm not watching this. Um, but somebody is apparently because WWE and E Entertainment Network announcing that Total Divas has been renewed for a second season in a press release from Jeff Old, the executive vice president. Uh, for programming and development at E! Entertainment. He says, we are excited to bring back this diverse trio of successful series for second seasons. Each of these series feature compelling personalities that offer unique stories and points of view from the world of pop culture. It's exciting to have this strong lineup of returning series in addition to our other popular core franchises to help propel us into 2014. The press release teases that season two will include the Bella Twins celebrating their 30th birthday. Oh, that's compelling. And Brie Bella's Journey to the Altar with Daniel Bryan. Yes, 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 indeed. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. Wouldn't it be funny if he, uh, somebody stood up like a Daniel Bryan fan? Does anybody not yeah, does they, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I think they're, you know, that's why their guest list is going to be very selective, I'm sure, to make sure that there's not some tool who would do that. And finally, uh, on a not-so-good note, former WWE Tag Team Champion suffering a stroke. WWE reporting that Tommy Billington, better known as the Dynamite Kid of the British Bulldogs, suffered a stroke. The report cites other reports as stating that the pro wrestling legend suffered mu multiple strokes over the last few weeks. Billington, who's 54, is wheelchair-bound due to injuries suffered throughout his in-ring career. He has also battled heart issues and is best known to WWE fans as one half of the British Bulldogs Tag Team he also had a legendary singles run in Japan 
and was the inspiration for a wrestler who has since been blacklisted from WWE by emulating his style and basically scrambling his brains and doing something that he shouldn't have done to his wife and son about six plus years ago. I think we all know who that is. The Canadian Voldemort himself. Chris Benoit. Exactly. Even more than banned. <laughs> yeah, most certainly. All right, we'll be back next week. We'll uh, we'll talk Slammies because that's going to be coming up a week from Monday. I'll have my Slammy here in the studio. The most Best wrestling radio talk show in the history and of we'll terrestrial have a radio. A cameo by Michael Cole. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's just for on. <sighs> All right, that's it for us. I'll deal with Lucas in the meanwhile. Maybe he'll be back next week. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly on WBC. Oh, I'll be back. 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton.